Hello guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Bukas. Uh, today I am going to explain you guys about the expansion tank sizing procedure. So before starting the calculation, I want to explain you guys about uh, expansion tank, what is expansion tank and uh, why we are using expansion tank in our system. So uh, expansion tanks are basically required in a closed loop heating or chill water system to absorb the expanding fluid and limit the pressure within the heating or cooling system so it is important to properly size your expansion tank because a properly sized expansion tank will accommodate the expansion of system flow during the heating or cooling cycle without allowing the system to exceed the critical pressures also expansion tank uh, basically uses the compressed air to maintain the system pressure by accepting and expelling the changing volume of water as it heats and cools. So this is the chiller you are drawing I have over here. As you can see, let me zoom it. This is the expansion tank that is connected to our system or pressurization pump set. As you can see here, uh, this expansion tank. So basically, today we are going to do the expansion tank sizing, and in the end, I will explain you guys about the position or location of the expansion tank where we need to uh, put our expansion tank. So make sure to watch the video till the end to get a better understanding of the expansion tank sizing. So let's start moving to the calculation procedure of the expansion tank. And I have made this excel sheet first of all we have this sheet that is related to expansion tank sizing formula second one is basically related to system volume calculation and the third one I have prepared over here for different charts and tables we are going to use during our calculations so let's start this uh, expansion tank sizing so this is the formula which we are going to use to calculate the expansion tank size. So what is this formula? Let's look at this. Vt is equal to Vs into V2 divided by V1 minus 1 minus 3 alpha delta T divided by 1 minus P1 by P2. So what are these parameters in this uh, formula? First we need to uh, understand what are these parameters. Only then we able to calculate the size of expansion tank so what is Vt? Vt is basically the volume of the expansion tank which we are going to calculate in gallons or cubic feet or cubic meter and Vs is the volume of the system volume of the system means volume of the system means that uh, all the pipes which we have used in our project and uh, all of the volume occupied by the pipes and equipments everything it is the sum of the all of the pipes and equipments volume so we will calculate this one and V1 is the specific volume of the water at low temperature and V2 is the specific volume of the water at high temperature and this P1 is low pressure and the minimum pressure we took over here is 20 psi the minimum pressure we can take for our system and P2 is the higher pressure alpha is the linear coefficient of thermal expansion it depends on material this alpha value it depends on material which material you are going to use you need to put the value over here so let me go to the third tab that is tables and chart to show you the value of alpha that is linear coefficient of thermal expansion so as you can see over here there I have a material list for aluminium, carbon steel, cast iron, copper and this is the thermal expansion coefficient for all the materials so since we are working on water system and the material which we use over here is carbon steel so alpha value over here is 6.5 into tons power minus 6 inches per inches degrees Fahrenheit so this value we are going to use in our calculation because we are using that carbon steel material so 6.5 into tons power minus 6 so this is the value which I have used over here for the alpha and delta T is equal to higher temperature minus lower temperature difference and this is 66 degrees Fahrenheit T1 is the lower temperature T2 is the higher temperature now what is lower temperature T1 
T1 is basically a virtual water supply temperature that is 44 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, T2 is the higher temperature or our ambient temperature on the location which I am working on let's say the location uh, ambient temperature is 110 degrees Fahrenheit in which I am working with so and T1 is the chilled water supply temperature so delta T is equal to T2 minus T1 so our temperature difference will be delta T equal to this T2 minus T1 ambient temperature minus chilled water supply temperature that comes out to be 66 degrees Fahrenheit so now we have to calculate uh, volume P1 specific volume of the water at lower temperature now how this value comes out I will show you so we know that our lower temperature chilled water supply temperature is 44 degrees Fahrenheit now we have to calculate the specific volume of the water at this lower temperature so let's move back to our tables and chart to get this value so 44 degrees Fahrenheit so this table is in degrees Celsius and this one in Fahrenheit as we know that our temperature is 44 degrees Fahrenheit since we don't have 44 here we have 40 and 50 and specific volume is same 0.01602 at 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 0.01602 at 50 degrees Fahrenheit so we can take this, this value at 44 degrees Fahrenheit that is 0.01602 cubic feet per LB so at 44 degrees Fahrenheit we have a specific volume of 0.01602 cubic feet per LB and the specific volume of the water at higher temperature and higher temperature ambient temperature is 110 degrees Fahrenheit so move back to our table and chart again as you can see that there is 110 degrees Fahrenheit and specific volume of the water over here is uh, uh, 0 0.01617 so we can use this value 0 0.0167 cubic feet per LB at 110 degrees Fahrenheit so this is value which I have right over here so now we have to calculate the high pressure that is 45 psi how this comes out P2 is basically our system maximum pressure system maximum pressure uh, is basically the pump head loss which we have already calculated if uh, you have seen my previous videos related to chilled water pump head calculation you can calculate the pump head and you can use that value over here to calculate your expansion tank size so let's say the pump head which we have calculated over here is uh, 70 feet so we need to convert this into psi in order to convert this into psi you need to multiply this chilled water pump head with 0.433 and you need to add 14.7 in order to convert this absolute to the gauge pressure so total formula is seven, this pump head into 0.433 plus 14.7 so P2 is the higher pressure higher pressure we got over here is 45.01 psi so now we have everything except system volume we will calculate now so now we have V2, V1 we have alpha value for the material that is black carbon steel 0 0.000065 and uh, we know the pressure P1 minimum pressure over system is 20 psi and the high pressure is 45 psi so only thing remaining over here is volume of the system Vs so let's move back to our second tab in order to calculate the volume of water in system I have divided this into two parts first part is related to the pipes all of the pipes which we use in our project and second part is related to the equipment side water content so first part so let's say that uh, this is all of the pipes which I have used in my project I have to write over here I need to mention the lengths which I have used in my system let's say that I have write everything and uh, and the second third tab is related to weight of water in pipe that is LB per feet how much LB per feet is required for that much this pipe size so let's say we have a 2 inch pipe and uh, move back move to the right side this is the water content table which we are going to use 
uh, we we can say that uh, two inch pipe size how much lb per feet of the water is required two feet this is the weight in lb per feet two inches weight per uh, lb per feet how much weight is required that is 1.36 so as you can see that 1.36 is required for two inch pipe size and uh, let's say 8 inch how much weight of the volume is required 8 inches weight of the weight lb per feet that is 21.8 21.8 so uh, you have to write everything uh, in the same way i have explained over here that is lb per feet is required for each and every pipe and the fourth column is ready to water of water volume in gallons per feet so let's say we have 3 inch pipe size how much gallons per feet is required for 3 inch pipe dia so gallons per feet for 3 inch pipe dia is required 0.367 you can see 0.367 so in the same way let's say for 10 inch pipe size how much gallons per feet how much gallons per feet is required for 10 inches 10 inches gallons per feet 4.08 4.08 so it's the same way you have to write gallons per feet for every pipe used in your project now next column is related to total volume as you can see that we have write uh, volume of water in gallons per feet per feet so now we have 100 feet 100 feet we need to multiply this 100 feet with that much volume of water per feet so we'll get the total volume in that much length so as you can see so we need to as you can see the formula which i have applied over here is volume of the water in gallons per feet multiply this length you will get the total volume in gallons uh, within this pipe and this length so total volume of the water required for one quarter pipe size having 100 feet length is 6.4 gallons so 4 inch pipe size is 73 feet length requires 47.67 gallons so in the same way you have to calculate for all so let's say we have calculated for all of these and we have summed it up over here so we have summed it up and total volume of the water in the pipes is 1189.54 gallons needed so this is basically the volume of the water inside the pipes which we have calculated over here now the second part is related to the equipment's volume how much volume of the water will be inside the equipment so let's say we have uh, four uh, we have write everything which we have in our project for air cool chillers and air handling units and then FCUs over here so air cool chillers we use in project is 4 so water volume in the gallons required per air cool chiller is 18.5 gallons you can get this value from the supply directly so you can write over here 18.5 or whatever the value which you have for your chiller so one Chiller required 18.5, so 4 kilos required 74 gallons. So uh, now the second we have air handling unit. So now we have air handling unit. So we need to write the water content in kgs and cubic meter, and then we need to convert this into gallons to get the total volume in gallons. So let's say we have air handling unit with a water content of 24.89 kgs you need to convert this into cubic meter by dividing by thousand so next is we need to convert this into gallons you can get this value also from supply how much content of the water is required for your air handling unit so water volume in the gallons in it in order to convert this into gallons you need to multiply this cubic meter with uh, 264.172 in order to convert this into because one cubic meter required to 64.172 US gallons so this air handling unit requires 6.58 US gallons so since we have one air handling unit of this type so we got total volume 
is 6.58 gallons so in the same way you have to calculate for all of the equipments of your project so in order to get this value uh, and then you have to sum up all the volume of the system which you have calculated above so total volume of the equipment over here is 140.94 gallons so for the due to the pipe the volume which we have calculated is 1189.54 and due to the equipment the volume which we have calculated over here is 140.94 gallons so total volume of the system is equal to pipe volume plus equipment volume so pipe volume is equal to 1189 and the equipment volume is 140.94 so this comes out to be 1330 1, gallons so now we have to apply safety factor you can take safety factor 10 to 15 percent so now I am going to apply 10 percent safety factor to our calculation so 10 percent safety factor of 1330 will be 133 gallons so total volume of our system will be now 1400 that is 1330 plus 133 that is equal to 1463.53 gallons so now what you have to do you you know all the values you know v2 you know v1 you know alpha delta t p1 p2 and vs total volume of the system we have just calculated now that is 1400 63.53 gallons so now we have to put all the values in our formula over here that is Vs into V2 by V1 minus 1 minus 3 alpha delta T divided by 1 minus P1 by T2 T2 so I have already write the formula over here and put all the values over here after that I got the value is 24.66 gallons so round off it will be 25 gallons so for that much system volume 1463 gallons volume of the whole system how much size of the tank it should be it should be 25 US gallons so our expansion tank size should be 25 US gallons so this is how you can calculate the expansion tank size or it's very easy to calculate if you know all these values you have to put it and then you can get the expansion tank size and the last thing I, I want to explain over here is the relate is the location related to the expansion tank so about the location of the expansion tank since the point of connection of expansion tank to system is point of no pressure change therefore it is typically located at the suction side of system pumps as you can see in this drawing this is our expansion tank and this is our main chilled water return header and uh, this expansion tank is connected to main chilled water header and this is further connected to suction side of primary chilled water pump therefore our expansion tank is connected to suction side of primary chilled water pumps and we don't want any air to withdraw into the system and we want the pressure everywhere in the system must be above atmospheric pressure and we don't want any air to drawn into the system that's why it is located on the suction side of the pumps so I hope you guys learned something from this video now you guys can calculate easily expansion tank size and uh, for more videos keep watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe thank you bye bye